Hey guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome to the start of a reading vlog. So for this reading vlog, I'm going to be reading two fantasy romance books that I've heard amazing things about and I've been wanting to pick up for a while. So first up we have Daughter of No Worlds. So all I know about this book is we are following this girl that has escaped slavery. Unfortunately, she has left all of her friends behind and she ends up teaming up with a fire wielder in order to try to save them. Now, I've been seeing this book all over Bookstagram. Everyone is raving about it, which is funny because I think it came out a while ago, but suddenly it's gaining a lot of popularity. So I cannot wait to jump into this. This is definitely gonna be the first read and I will keep this completely spoiler free. And then next I plan on reading A River of Shadows and this is by Karina Halley. So this one actually, I've been seeing a little bit of mixed reviews, but I've been wanting to pick this up since the summer and the audiobook was finally released. So this is following a girl who has been estranged from her father. Now her father ends up passing away and when she travels to his funeral, his body is missing and she finds out that her father was actually a very powerful shaman. And in order to barter for more life, he traveled to the underworld. So she is going to go to the underworld to try to find him. And the story goes from there. I think she ends up being captured by like a Hades character. And it sounds really good. Both books just sound absolutely amazing. I've been in a really like fantasy romance mood recently and this should be fun. So once again, this will be completely spoiler free until the very end where I talk about my feelings overall on the books. And I will definitely give you guys a spoiler warning before that happens. And yeah, I will check in with you guys after I've read. All right, guys, so I'm a little more than halfway into Daughter of No Worlds, and I have thoughts. This isn't going to contain any like major spoilers, but I'm going to talk about like what's going on in the book. So when the book starts up, we meet our main character, Tasana and she is being sold into slavery. So she's able to do some very basic performative magic. So the slave traders end up buying her, but the rest of her village is sent to the mines where they're presumably killed. So Tisana ends up being sold to this master who as far as like masters go, he's not the worst. And he tells her when she's a child that she'll eventually be able to buy her freedom if she's able to save up about a thousand gold coins. So it takes her almost 10 years to come up with this or like nine to 10 years. And eventually she is able to save that amount of money. However, when she goes to her master to try to buy her freedom, he flips out, accuses her of prostituting herself or doing something um, illegal in order to obtain this money. So he, they have a big blowout. Eventually she is able to escape with the help of her friend who's also a slave. And she makes it to this like government order, but this order is comprised of people that do magic. So they try to stay neutral for the most part. However, she wants them to send soldiers to help like free all of her people. So I really do love that about our main character is that even though she's able to get her freedom, she still is not okay. She's still like, I wanna go back and free everyone else. So she's asking this order for help and they're like, look, you have to pass this test. You have to be like accepted into the order before we'll even really listen to you. So she has to be trained. She ends up being trained by Max. Now Max is this like hermit who is credited for ending this giant war that happened um, years prior, but he wants nothing to do with the order and the magic. Like, yes, he is still part of it, but he just wants to stay by himself not train anyone, not deal with any kind of politics. However, he ends up working with Tasana and he develops, he almost admires her because she does have like such a powerful drive and just really wants to help people. So he ends up training her. We realize that she's actually very gifted when it comes to magic. And we also know something that happened previously that I'm not gonna say because it is a major spoiler, but she's very good at certain types of magic. So anyway, she ends up passing the first test. And now Max, we can tell is gonna be a love interest. Like he really is like, they're starting to flirt a little bit. This is so slow burn because like I said, I'm more than halfway into this. They haven't even kissed yet or anything. So Max realizes that they wanna use Tisana for something other than just as a soldier. They wanna put a weapon inside her. And this weapon is actually sentient magic that Max at one point had in him. Um, and we just know it's not gonna be good. So that's pretty much where I stopped. Um, I will say if any of you have read Full Metal Alchemist or watched the anime, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. This is Roy Mustang. Our love interest is Roy Mustang and pretty much everything going on is the Ishbalan War is what this really feels like. I know it's gonna be a very select number of you that know what I'm talking about, but for those that you do, if you like Roy Mustang, you will love our love interest. But anyway, 
I am liking it. It's just not what I was expecting going into it. So this is very much a fantasy that just happens to feature a romance as opposed to like a fantasy romance or romance fantasy. Um, and there's so much politics going on and I'm having a very hard time visualizing everything. So I actually talked to one of my friends who rated this three stars, like one of the only people I know that rated it kind of low. And I asked her why she wasn't a fan. And they said it was just because they also, like they had trouble visualizing the world. I just feel like the world building we're given a lot of information, but not enough details that I'm able to like visualize it in my mind, if that makes any sense. And I just, I think the pacing is really slow, but I am enjoying the story more now. I think that the last few chapters are apparently supposed to be like absolutely amazing. And I'm sure everyone I know really, really loves this series. So I'm really hoping that I do end up enjoying it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's super slow based. I love our main character. I just wish we had a little bit more romance, a little bit more angst and yeah, so we'll see. Um, if you can't tell, I am in like stop dead traffic. So I'm hopefully going to get home within the next hour, uh, cook dinner. And then I plan on reading a little bit more. So anyway, I will check in with you guys after I finished, um, should be in the next day or two. I think she knows that She drives him crazy when she's looking like that The way she's moving makes him want it so bad It's the attention that we wish that we had Yeah, it's almost cruel Cause I want her to Oh yeah, I'm running in circles just to make her react My heart is racing, yeah, I want her so bad I wanna kiss her but I know for a fact that she's Alright guys, so it is Friday. I finished Daughter of New World and I'm really not sure what I think about it. I gave it four stars, but honestly, that was kind of generous. It might be like 3.5. I just didn't like the romance in this book. Um, it was kind of a letdown for me, which is so funny because all of the reviews I read talk about how like swoon worthy this romance is. And it just felt really surface level. Like, I don't know, I just didn't love it. I will say the second half of the book definitely picked up in terms of like action. Um, I think where I left off talking to you guys last time, they had just put the weapon inside our main character. So after that happens, the book gets a lot darker. We find out about our love interest history and why he's chosen to kind of step away from this magical order. And we actually get to go back to where Tasana is originally from and a bunch of action takes place at that point. So I did enjoy the overall story and I think it's written beautifully and it is very detailed, but yet still not like immersive enough. So I, I'm gonna give the second book a try. The only issue I'm kind of worried about with that is that people say the second book is slower than this book. And I felt like this book was so slow, but I am gonna continue with the series. And I started River of Shadows by Karina Halley. So funny enough, this book didn't get great reviews and I already feel more invested in this book than I did with Daughter of No Worlds. Um, this is following a girl who is estranged from her father. Then her father ends up passing away. So she travels to Finland where he's been living. And when she gets there right away, she notices that something seems a little off with the people that were surrounding her father. And also her father's casket is empty. So her father's body is missing. So she learns from her father's apprentice that her father was actually a shaman and he was dying. So he decided to travel to the underworld to make a deal with death. And now our main character is gonna try to travel there to find him. And where I left off, she was being like taken by boat to the underworld. And it was, it just seems like it's gonna be fun. Um, Karina Halley's writing isn't my favorite. And I forgot about that because I read Black Sunshine by her and I loved it. But then I read a contemporary romance by her and it was not my thing. And yeah, I don't always love her writing, but I am excited to finish this. I think it is gonna be pretty good. And yeah, so like I said, it is Friday. I am about to head to New York where me and my uh, friend are going to see a Disney cover band, which sounds ridiculous, but I swear it is one of the most fun things I've ever done. You pretty much just get drunk and sing Disney songs with a bunch of other like-minded Disney adults and it is just the best time. So I might take some B-roll of just like going to Manhattan and then getting there. So it should be fun. But anyway, I will check in with you guys after I have finished River of Shadows. So let us dance this side away.
Bodies move to the groove and the light the flicker. We get lost in the crowd, it's getting thicker. We get away, get away from the drinks and chatter. Haven't said a word, but it doesn't matter. Feel the urge. All right, guys, so this is the final update. I finished River of Shadows, and I actually enjoyed it more than I thought it was going to. So this was also like a 3.5 star read for me. Um, the beginning of this was actually really good. I felt really invested in the story. Um, there was a lot of cool like magic as far as like the shamans and these like monsters that have antlers and there was a unicorn But it was like an evil unicorn and it was just really cool the way it was done But then the second half of the book felt completely disconnected from the first half of the book So the first half of the book really sets it up for like an adventure of this girl trying to find her father in the underworld but then the second part of the book is very much like from Blood and Ash-esque, where it's this person, she's slowly falling in love with death. And it kind of has like a Beauty and the Beast retelling feel to it. And I just feel like both parts felt like disjointed. Like it didn't seem like a cohesive story. Um, and I was fine with her being captured by death and like slowly starting to fall in love with death. But like, it didn't feel like that was set up in the beginning of the story. If that makes any sense, this might just be a me thing. Um, and then the ending, I, I'm assuming there's going to be more books. I thought this was a standalone, but it definitely ends um, unfinished. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to continue with the series. It just, I feel like it needed like a couple more rounds of editing and it would have been better. I just feel like it turned into something I wasn't expecting towards the end. But overall, I did enjoy both books. And yeah, if you're thinking about picking them up, I would definitely give them a try. Daughter of No Worlds was pretty good, just wasn't what I was expecting, and kind of the same thing with River of Shadows. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and I said this already, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.